Welcome to our feature clip highlighting our project management capabilities in SAP Business One Release 9.2. Project information in SAP Business One was limited to financial data. To complement SAP Business One's existing project based features, we have rolled out additional project management functionality, now combined into one solution. We have centralised all the project related transactions, documents, resources and activities, making it much easier to track and manage the different tasks and stages or phases of a project from start to finish. Centralisation of project data allows you to more easily analyse budgets and costs and generate reports relating to all aspects of your project, providing greater transparency and thus making more informed decisions. We are going to step you through a typical business scenario. OEC Computers sells and installs computer equipment. Some of the solutions they offer include planning, installation and maintenance of computers. OEC Computers map their customer requirements, estimate the time and materials required and then they create a budget for each project they deliver. When the project details have been approved by the customer, installation begins. So let's now see how we would execute this project activity in SAP Business One Release 9.2. We are now logged in to SAP Business One Release 9.2 as Jason Butler from OEC Computers. Firstly, to use project management, you need to first enable the feature under Administration, System Initialization, Company Details, and under the Basic Initialization tab, if you scroll down, you will see a checkbox that says Enable Project Management. Under the Project Management module, we are going to open up a project for our customer ADA Technologies. This project involves the upgrade of their IT infrastructure including servers, fiber optics, printers, and also personal computers. On the header level, we can see that we've defined this project as an external project. You can also create internal projects. We've identified a project name, the start date and due date, and also a project lead, for example, the sales employee that's going to be managing the project. You also have the ability to define a number of sub-projects within a large project and to manage those sub-projects you would check this box. Under the Overview tab, we have defined this project's risk level as low, the industry as IT, and we've included any relevant comments such as this is going to be just a standard IT infrastructure project. Let's move on to the Stages tab. Under the Stages tab, as you can see here, We've already started the project by defining a number of stages and tasks and their start and end dates. Currently, we're just finishing off the scoping and blueprinting phase. When working with a project, we can also assign a financial project to it. In this example, we've created a financial project called ADA, and this will be used on all documents generating journal entries and will give us additional reporting capabilities. Once we have a financial project selected, this will be added automatically to the extended selection criteria on all of our example profit and loss reporting requirements. So under the Stages tab, we have a number of predefined stages. These stages for our project are Start, Execution, Test and Finish. And all of these stages can be defined according to your project requirements. For this project, we kick off the project with the Start stage and the task associated with this stage is the scoping task. And this is where we're actually going to map the customer requirements. Tasks, of course, can also be defined based on your project requirements. We then estimate a planned cost associated with this stage. And likewise, you can see any invoiced or open amounts relating to this particular stage of your project as well. We've also defined the percentage in which this particular stage will take across the entire project. For example, this stage is only about 5% of the entire project. This is where we define whether or not the stage is completed 
We also have the ability to assign an owner or a person responsible to this particular stage or task. And in this case, Sophie Clogg is responsible for this planning stage. And our overall project leader is Jason Butler, who is our sales manager. You also have the ability to define any stage dependencies. And what this means is you can't move on to the next stage until a particular stage or task has been set as completed. Here we have a dependency between the mapping of the requirements and the execution stage. And what we need is to have all of the budgets and scoping signed off by the customer prior to the installation phase. For this particular project, we have a scoping task. We then move on to budgeting, which actually happens in parallel with the scoping phase. We then move on into the implementation phase. And then we have a finalize as well as the go live phase. Let's highlight the scoping phase. If we scroll down to the bottom here, we've got a number of options to review. We've got open issues, any attachments, any documents, work orders or activities. So for the particular stage that we have highlighted, if we open up the open issues phase, we can see that there are two open issues relating to this particular stage that need to be solved before we can move on to the installation phase. As our project management capabilities are linked and integrated with our service module, we also have the ability, for example, to look at a solution for any open issues. So as we can see here, Sophie Clogg has found a solution and we can drill down to that solution, which comes from our solutions knowledge base, and it will give us a solution to resolve for this particular open issue. In order to close off on these open issues, we need to actually find the sign-off documentation and also any detailed missing planning documentation for us to move on to the next stage. So before we can close these open issues, we're going to move on to the attachments and make sure that we attach the relevant documentation for our scoping phase. Once we have received the required documentation, such as the sign-off documentation and any detailed plans that we need, we're able to include them in the attachments area. and then I can simply update a document. I can also then go into the open issues list and then I can mark these open issues as closed given that we've received the information that we need to close off on this stage. Now that we've finalized the first stage of our project, we can tick the finished checkbox and then if we update our project window, we can see that the percentage complete field has been updated to reflect that 5% of the project is completed. In addition, we've also completed the budgeting phase of this project. And we can update the project window and also see that now the project has been updated to reflect that it is 10% complete. Let's now move on to the actual execution of the project. So if we move on to our implementation phase, we can see that we have defined a planned cost of $21,000. And this is the result of the scoping and budgeting that was done in the previous two phases. The person responsible for the implementation phase is going to be a user called Julie Bowens. Julie has at least spent some time on the implementation phase and as a result, we can now start posting expenses. If we move to the documents part of the project window, we have the ability to be able to select a delivery, for example, document and corresponding AR invoice to particular project. Julie Bowens has worked 10 hours on this particular project for the implementation stage, so we can actually invoice 10 hours of labor item. So let's now select the delivery document that we created by simply selecting the right document type and the right document number that's assigned to this project. If we drill down to the delivery document, we can see that this delivery document includes the number of labor hours that Julie has worked, which is 10. And so this cost will then be attributed to this project. In addition, we've also sold two servers and two printers to the customer for this project. So we're going to include 
that invoice as well. As you can see, when we drill down to the invoice, you have two servers and two printers listed here under the error invoice for this project implementation. Let's now update the project window. What you can see here now is that we have a running total of the invoiced amount and any open amounts outstanding. And what this means is you can at any point in time be able to view the invoice and opened amounts at a row level from within the project window. Julie actually needs to schedule a meeting with the client for the following Monday. So what we're going to do now is schedule an activity. We can do this as well directly from in the project management window. By clicking on activities, we've got the ability to create or open up a new activity. In this case, we're creating a new activity. The new activity is going to be a meeting at the customer site. It's going to be linked to our customer ADA technologies. It's going to be a project review meeting and we're going to schedule it for Monday, starting at 8 a.m. and finishing at 12. Now I've got an activity directly linked to this project window. If we now go into the calendar and by selecting the group view, we can see that Julie has scheduled a project meeting for next Monday. With the group view, we can follow the meetings and tasks of all people working on that project. So you can now monitor all, for example, customer facing activity in one place. Let's now finally go to the Summary tab. Here we can see an overview of the project. We can see the budget, any accumulator budget, profit values, any work order costs, and accumulator profit values across this project. Under Project Reports, you also have the ability to review the stages in more detail. By selecting Stage Analysis, you can then review the different stages across all of the different projects you have running at any point in time. You can also review all of your open issues and any resources that have been allocated to these projects. We have just demonstrated a simple project in Business One, which can now be managed centrally, making it much easier to analyse budget costs and generate reports integrated with other processes such as the service module and activities relating to all aspects of your projects. So thank you for your time today and make sure you check out the other feature clips highlighting what's new in SAP Business One Release 9.2.